what prompted you to start the project yeah so i am essentially a technologist as to start with there's a more than uh, an entrepreneur uh so here we are essentially looking at electrifying our craft uh, just like how uh what do you call ground vehicles are actually getting electrified and you're now having evs question is is it possible to actually have electric aircraft and uh when we start a new technology you uh, it will always be less uh, efficient than the existing technology so you have to find new markets for uh, its operation than the conventional markets because the conventional markets will demand whatever is the performance that is currently required what that means is that uh, in terms of electric aircraft you don't have a long enough range for you to actually go from one airport to another airport. so therefore we have to actually find what is the market where you will uh, be able to work with a shorter range and that is where we need to actually look at uh, ev tolls electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft uh, which can uh, essentially serve the uh, short haul mobility and urban air mobility kind of segments where you know there is a traffic congestion problem that you want to solve so we kind of repurpose electric aviation for a solution of uh, urban congestion so that is the you know context in which we are working at deep deep what prompted um you did say the issue why it is required sir at when when there should be some trigger to the so the 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 uh uh the outlook is that electric electric aviation will disrupt the aviation space in the foreseeable future in the next decade out uh which will essentially mean that aviation will become a lot more ubiquitous more democratized and uh, more accessible to a lot of people and will quicken people's pace of uh, progress uh, in their daily lives moving from one place to the other at cheaper costs as well as at a much more sustainable manner uh, for the environment so that is the future so we are essentially triggered by what we can enable in the future while there we need to actually look at what are the markets that we can target uh that will enable this technology to grow from its infancy yeah as a country is india ready for this kind of a year it's a technology which is going to disrupt but it is also very futuristic are we ready at this point of time what okay. you can ask this about any country i don't think india is any different from any other country anymore uh in fact i have the opposite view that different what's good for india is good for the world right so we need to flip the coin and then say uh, we will do things in india at a scale for about 1.4 billion people sort of thing we have about 600 million people in the middle class which is actually both us and europe combined yeah so why shouldn't we do it in fact we should do it i had of other people and uh, let them actually start imbibing so we have upi we have uh, the aadhar stack we have uh, you know even the evms are something that other people should actually take from us okay so likewise uh, yeah why, what's wrong with the india doing this but evms had a very bad trip no no that's all politicized but i mean if you look at it the other pay, in other countries it's actually much more pathetic right that's what i'm trying to say we have to actually look at what is the best option that's available yeah how uh, what is this update on this project sir? where are we at this part of time so we have developed a subscale prototype and demonstrated last year uh we are now working on a commercial version of it and uh, we are uh, you know on the verge of flying that in the next few weeks uh and then we will go ahead and commercialize it and the subscale version obviously is not meant for uh, passenger travel it's meant for cargo so we will have to actually socialize this with uh, cargo transport uh players uh so that they can actually try to adopt it we'll have to go through a certification process of that and all those things but in the meantime we are actually working on the passenger version uh we are now getting getting into the detail design phase um uh, and then we will get into prototyping later this year by early next year we should actually have the first passenger prototype what is the when you say you, you substrate what 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 is the level in fact how what is the height it can go and what is the reach it um, so the uh, the subscale prototype is actually uh governed under the drone rules so 
although we can actually go to fairly high altitudes, like about 5,000 feet, uh, with that uh, aircraft, uh, we are still actually bound by the drone rules that uh, limit us to fly under 400 feet. So that's the kind of altitudes that we will be operating at. But 400 feet, don't you think you have limitations in terms of the considering you have so many entrances? Not in India. Uh, so that's where actually India is good. Uh, so most buildings in India are actually about 50 to uh, 100 meters tall. 400 feet is about 122 meters. Uh, yeah, whereas if you go abroad, a lot of places, you have skyscrapers that are 500 meters tall. That's actually much, much more than 400 feet. Uh, yeah, right now we don't have that problem in India. Can you give an example of the usage? You said cargo. Uh, let's take an example, say from A to B, how we get people and what sort of model are you going? So we are essentially uh, developing the entire stack of technologies to be completely autonomous flights from takeoff to landing. Um, so we can program the flight controller to understand where it is, where it needs to go, what is the path that it needs to take, um, any waypoints that it has to cover, uh, plus all the way down to the precision landing um, where we have a computer vision algorithm based on cameras. Uh, on the way, if there are any obstacles, we will actually be able to detect those obstacles and avoid those obstacles. So all of that stuff is packed into this particular stack. Um, the landing site required for it, it's about a 3 meter by 3 meter wingspan and nose to tail kind of uh, form factor. So it doesn't require a very large piece of land. Um, something like about a few few tens of square feet is good enough. And uh, we can actually mark the landing site with a pattern that the compute, the onboard uh, camera can lock onto and land. So we have to essentially partner with uh, logistics players who want us to take goods from place to place, set up that few tens of square feet worth of landing site uh, and the patterns that they need to be positioned for landing. And uh, we have our autonomous algorithms that we can use for uh, flying. Of course, I think the regulations require us to actually have a human pilot uh, to be ready to take over uh, as a manual override. Um, so it will be under the watchful eyes of a human being, uh, a trained pilot, a trained uh, remote pilot. Uh, and uh, that's the way the operations will have to happen. Do you think the regulations uh, have you approached the government? Or is it at what stage it was in? Yeah, the government likes it. Yeah, so the government is uh, aware of what we're doing. And uh, so we have actually started uh, the military certification and uh, we will have to concurrently go through the civil certification for this uh, subscale period, right? Okay. Uh, but when you say um, from A to B, uh, will you be then supplying only to a particular group? particular destination is that it can't be like any anywhere any any place I can go yeah so uh, for drones uh, there is these uh, zonings which is green zone yellow zone and red zone and all that red zone you cannot fly yellow zone you need permissions uh, green zone you can fly without permissions right. uh, so if you are uh, within the green zone all you have to do is to have a flat concrete platform of this short uh, say size that I talked about mm -hmm for you to be able to take off and land. Um, this is all for the unmanned version, not the manned version. Not manned versions, rules, regulations, all of those things are quite vastly different. Mm. Uh, but what I'm talking about is the unmanned version. Okay. Um, yeah, so the answer is, whichever is the user, if it is green zones, uh, you don't need permissions. Yellow zones, the permissions have not been enabled yet, but uh, we are in talks with the government as well as the government is also working on how to, what are the what is the requirement for yellow zone permissions that will be safe and secure. Yeah. But what, what will be the capacity of the uh, drone? So we are looking at uh, uh, the the uh, un, the subscale prototype that I'm talking about is actually targeting, today it's targeting about uh, 35 kg payload. Uh, but we are also actually looking, we're working on upgrading it to 50 kg yeah, that's a kind of payload. Still, customers would be in when the NSA works in logistic test. Yeah, so this actually, the, the 50 kg payload uh, could actually be like a, what's called, a, what they call a mid-mile segment. That is, uh, 
um, you look at a lot of uh, logistics players like uh, people who are uh, delivering parcels. Um, so it could be parcels up to about 50 kgs or it could be a bunch of different parcels that come to a particular collection center or a distribution center from a warehouse or a... So today, for example, if you look at logistics players, they bring things from trucks or trains or air, uh, these different terminals like railway stations and so on, or if it is trucks, it will actually be positioned at the edge of the city. From there, they need to actually go into the distribution centers uh, or slash collection centers. That is, these centers is where uh, they will collect the parcels from customers, push it to the warehouse. From there, they will send it by trucks or whatever. So they have that kind of an ecosystem. So we are actually talking about hastening the mid-mile logistics. We're not really doing the 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 last either the last mile or the uh, the first money. For this, it should be really a critical cargo. I mean, otherwise, it just it can move, right? I use it. Maybe a time will absolutely it should be time sensitive. Absolutely. So we don't fancy that uh, this is going to replace all of the cargo movement at all. So uh, we feel that, you know, uh, precious cargo, as you mentioned, uh, or time-critical cargo, it could be even medical supplies, uh, organs uh, from you know, between hospitals or any of those kinds of things. Um, or uh, uh, it could be in hilly terrain where it takes much longer for you to actually reach the place uh, or, or with water bodies, whatever, some geographical constraints uh, where you have, you have to take a, take a roundabout route Instead of that, you can actually take an aerial route as a pro flies. What sort of that would on the testing part? How how, uh, how many hours of testing were you done the testings? Yeah. So uh, the, the 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 key is to actually be able to test the commercial prototype. So as I said, we are actually about a few weeks away from its flight test. And mm-hmm. uh, then as we are putting that through uh, at least about hundred hours of flight, let's say. Uh, we will go through the certification process as well. So we are a, we are a, let's say a few months away from uh, commercialization that way. That as of now it is more in the testing. Right now actually it's being assembled. So yeah, the commercial prototype. Last year we actually did quite a bit of tests on the experimental prototype, and uh, we have now developed a commercial prototype. Where where is this testing going to happen? The testing actually happens in green zones. Effectively, we have to actually look at uh, non. Uh, or uninhabited areas which are in the green zones, and uh, we rather test those. Yeah, that's that's where it is. Yes. But what on in terms of the investment, how much has this project cost? Or well, some way down. And also looking at the viability, how long will it take uh, to actually really start earning money from? Right. So uh, there, there are two different questions. So first of all, uh, we have raised so far about uh, 5.85 million. US dollars in the previous two rounds, and then we are just about to close a ten million dollar round. Ten million, yeah. Um, and uh, that, sorry, from who? From uh, actually a, a rainbow set of investors. Um, so it's been our past investors, some some new ones, individuals, and so on. Can us uh, be a new story for? Uh, not exactly. We are not mentioning saying that there yeah. are auto raise. Yeah, so we'll close and then we will probably talk about it. Right. We, again, we are about a few weeks away from closing. So, in, uh, ju- I mean, just letting you know that that's kind of investments that's happening right now. Uh, because we are trying to actually, in the same breath, you ask about the revenues. The revenues are actually getting clogged by even the smaller drones that we have done, even without the subscale prototype. The subscale prototype is actually closer to the passenger prototype in terms of size. It's about three meters wingspan, as I said. Uh, whereas the full scale prototype is about for a three seater, we are actually targeting a eight meter wingspan. Whereas uh, we have a one point seven meters wingspan uh, vehicle that is capable of carrying two kgs and trying to expand it to about two point seven meter wingspan mm-hmm. for upgrading it to about a six kg payload. So there are several versions that we have uh, that we had started building even as far back as about twenty nineteen when drones were illegal completely. And uh, now drones are being allowed. The rules are now well set for us to be able to use. The certification norms are laid out. We just have to go through the process. Okay. All of that. So our current revenues are actually going to be in the uh, in, in, in the proper drone space. Right? So we have an agricultural drone that will go spray. Uh, 
you know, what do you call pesticides and fertilizers in the farms. That's actually an emerging uh, area. Mm. Um, so that, as well as the 2 kg and the 6 kg payload capacity drones, where you could actually also fit a camera for a lot of uh, uh, inspection or uh, survey, surveillance, mapping kind of purposes, uh, as well as take cargo, uh, which could actually be the last mile cargo. Um, uh, again, we can, we have like a, a ability to do two to two and a half kgs over about a 50 kilometer distance. Same story that even if 50 kilometers is not required, we could do multiples of 10 kilometers when compared to an equivalent multi-copter drone and save on battery life and battery cost, battery replacement cost and all that. So all of that stuff is already happening. Okay. The subscale prototype commercialization will essentially join that bandwagon right. as it uh, un unveils by itself. But where do we know all this market kit? Oh, so we are actually uh, looking to set up a manufacturing facility as well. Um, so we are uh, working on uh, a joint venture for getting investments for that purpose. Yeah, that will also have to fructify. And then it, when it does, we will find a uh, factory space uh, where we can set up a sh factory shop floor for manufacturing and so on and that will be modulated by the demand and uh, so on the one hand uh, for example the agricultural drone actually has a good amount of customer uh, uptake uh, it's now fairly popularized by others whereas most of the logistics drones they will still have to actually socialize it with uh, uh, customers um, so we have to do a lot of demos yeah. and uh, paid pilots, those kinds of things. That's actually an ongoing process at the moment as we speak. So once we are able to sensitize customers and generate the demand, we should actually be in a position to, uh, you know, uh, supply the required number of pieces for, uh, uh, you know, undertaking these demands or, or uh, meeting the demands. And uh, uh, so we have a plan for uh, setting up a factory for that.